Have you ever wondered about the insane stories that took place behind the castle's walls? These bizarre medieval scandals will astound you, from scandalous affairs to unconceivable acts of corruption. What startling secrets have been kept for centuries? Let's start talking about them in today's video. Helois and Abelard Possibly the most well-known medieval couple, Helois. De Argentuil was a brilliant student of the 12th century scholar Peter Abelard. They began an intense sexual connection in secrecy, which resulted in Helois' pregnancy. The couple's baby would be named Astrolabe. Peter successfully persuaded her that they should get married, but she agreed to a private ceremony solely to protect his professional reputation. Unfortunately, Helois's uncle organized a group of men to attack Abelard and castrate him at the behest of Helois. Peter eventually became a monk and Helois a nun. Nonetheless, they never stopped exchanging letters with one another. They almost certainly share a gravesite. Ball of the Burning Men Charles VI, France's current monarch, ascended to the throne at the age 12 in 1380. By the 1390s, he was experiencing the delusions and psychosis brought on by his mental condition. At one time, he even believed that he was made of glass. His new bride, Isabeau of Bavaria, threw a ball on January 28, 1393 to celebrate the remarriage of a lady-in-waiting. Charles and four noblemen disguised as wild men danced around throughout the celebrations. Louis of Valois, Duke of Orleans, however, arrived late and inebriated, carrying a torch into the room against instructions to the contrary. Then, he inadvertently set fire to one of the wild men dancers, and the blaze soon spread due to the flammable nature of their clothing. A young woman put her dress over the monarch, saving him from harm, while a dancer fled by plunging into the wine barrels. According to one historian, four men were burned alive, their flaming genitals dropping to the floor, releasing a stream of blood, while other nobles suffered serious injuries attempting to save them. When news of the tragedy went around Paris, the populace blamed the decadence of the court and nearly rose out in revolt. Charles's family had to pacify them with public displays of contrition. The Synod of Cadaver The papacy was frequently involved in petty disagreements and strong rivalries during the 9th and 10th centuries. In 897, Pope Stephen VI had a predecessor Pope Formosus exhumed and put on trial, marking possibly the lowest point in Papacy's history. Formosus's dead body was displayed on a throne as Stephen yelled insults and accusations at him. Formosus was found guilty, as expected, and his punishment included having his garments taken away, having three of his fingers hacked off, and having his body dumped into the Tiber River. Stephen was arrested due to public outcry and was strangled to death in jail. Pope Benedict IX gives up his position as Pope and sells it. One of Benedict IX's successors stated that regarding his rapes, murders and other unspeakable acts, while referring to Benedict IX, who became Pope in 1032 at the age of approximately 20 years old. I recoil in disgust at the thought of his reign as Pope because it was so disgusting, so filthy and so execrable. The most embarrassing moment of his pontificate occurred in 1045, when his godfather offered him a substantial sum of money in exchange for his resignation from his position as pope so that his godfather might subsequently be elected to the papal throne. Benedict accepted the money, but within a year he began to second-guess his decision and travel to Rome, where he took control of the papacy. As a result of Benedict and his godfather's increasingly outrageous antics, the German Emperor marched his army into Italy and ousted both of them. The Chestnut Feast Rodrigo Borgia, who became Pope Alexander VI in 1492, was one of the most notorious medieval popes. Rodrigo was notoriously unscrupulous and eager to seek power, and his papacy was marred by a number of scandals. This trait was shared by several of his offspring, most notably Cesare and Lucretia. One of the worst was the so-called Banquet of Chestnut. As described by a papal official, Johann Burchard, Cesare Borgia arranged a banquet in his chambers in the Vatican with 50 honest prostitutes called courtesans who danced after dinner with the attendants and others who were present, first in their garments, then naked. At supper, the Pope, Cesare and his sister Lucretia watched as the candelabra 
where the flickering candles were removed from the tables and placed on the floor. Chestnuts were scattered about, and the naked quarters inspected them up, squeezing between the chandeliers on their hands and knees. At the end of the competition, winners were awarded tunics of silk, shoes, barrels and other goods for their frequent participation in the act with the courtesans. Told in Nestle Affair, the three daughters-in-law of King Philip IV of France were all participants in the adulterous affair that took place during his reign. In the year 1314, the king's daughter Isabella, who was married to Edward II of England, notified her father that the purses she had given to her sisters-in-law had been taken by two Norman knights. As a result, the monarch began an investigation into the matter. It was speculated that the knights and the princesses were engaging in sexual misconduct within a Parisian tower known as the Tour de Nesle. In the end, Philip was successful in having two knights apprehended and then torturing them until they confessed. They would first have their testicles removed before being hanged, after which they would either be drawn and quartered or crushed over a wheel. During this time, the three daughters-in-law were brought up on charges and a guilty verdict was returned for two of them. Both of their heads were shaved and they were condemned to life in jail without the possibility of parole. The following year, one of the princesses was found dead under unexplained circumstances and it seems likely that she had been murdered. The other princess was held captive for eight years in a subterranean jail before being released to become a nun. She passed just a few years later, having endured a period of ill health as a direct result of her incarceration. A male cross-dressing prostitute named John Reichener, who works in London. In the year 1395, the authorities of London detained John Reichener as he was acting the part of a lady and engaging in sexual activity with another man. The transcript of John's interrogation reveals that he had been cross-dressing and working as a prostitute for both men and women for a period of several months. The report reveals the identities of a large number of individuals who are his clients, and it concludes with John making the following observation. He often had sex as a man with many nuns and also had sex as a man with many women, both married and otherwise. How many, he did not know. Reichner also revealed that many priests had done that vice with him as with a woman, an exact number of which he did not know. He also stated that he accommodated priests more readily than other people because they wished to offer him more than other people. The Fall of the Medici Bank in Italy The Medici family of Florence established their own bank towards the tail end of the 14th century and over the course of the following century they would rise to become the wealthiest family in all of Europe. However, the bank's fortune began to deteriorate as a result of questionable business decisions and poor lending practices which led to the establishment of branches across the continent. In the end, things reached the point where the Medici was forced to resort to stealing money from the Florentine state treasury and even from a charitable fund in order to pay dowries to young ladies. During King Charles VII of France's invasion of Italy in 1494, the bank was closed down and Piero de' Medici, also known as Piero the Unfortunate, was banished from Florence. Both of these events occurred simultaneously. Bribery and fraud in the English legal system During the last years of Edward III's reign, prominent members of the administration leveled allegations of corruption against the monarch. People like William Latimer, who served as the King's Chamberlain, and Richard Lyon, who served as the Warden of the Mint, were seen to be enriching themselves by soliciting and accepting bribes, stealing money from the government and using financial loopholes in order to charge exorbitant interest rates on loans. During this time, Edward's mistress, Alice Pereiras, was accused of deceiving the elderly king into bestowing lands and other gifts onto her. In the year 1376, the English Parliament made an attempt to put an end to the corrupt activities by putting Latimer and Lyons in jail, as well as compelling Ferrers to leave England and give up his holdings as payment. However, in the following years, the acts taken by Parliament were reversed, which made it possible for these individuals to regain power. The issues would not be resolved and were one of the factors that led to the Peasants' Revolt in 1381. During this uprising, the rebels tracked down Richard Lyons in London and beheaded him in the middle of the street. That's all for the video today, we'll be right back and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.